Welcome back, Flare community. Today, we have some very exciting news, and that is the launch of the State Connector on the Songbird network. In this video, we're going to read through a document and talk about why this is so revolutionary and so important. So here we have this document, which I was very fortunate to receive prior to the announcement so I could get something together for you. And this is what we're going to read through today. First things first, at the bottom here, the too long didn't read section, Flare's state connector is the solution to secure universal interoperability. And yes, interoperability is one of the key words that I'm paying attention to in 2022. It enables smart contracts on Flur to prove the state of any open system in a secure and decentralized manner. And I think something that is really important to highlight is any open system. As we can see here, it connects to both on-chain and off-chain data sources, bringing a new era of utility for decentralized applications or dApps. The state connector is faster and safer than existing cross-chain interoperability solutions. State connector has a seamless deployment with no amendments or integrations required on the connected blockchain or data source. And this is actually particularly important because we want to integrate as many sources as possible without having to rely on them to implement some changes themselves. If we scroll down here, the state connector is a core protocol required for the delivery of F assets, which will bring non-contract tokens such as Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and XRP onto Flare so that they can use Ethereum virtual machine-based smart contracts and access the decentralized economy. The state connector also sets the foundation for a trustless and secure universal bridge to be built on Flur. Finally, it allows the safe relay of information between all chains connected to Flur, leading to true cross-chain decentralized application interoperability and composability. Wow, if that does not excite you, I really don't know what is. The State Connector really is a revolutionary protocol coming to Songbird, and it's really going to change the game. So let's look at the introduction here. Flare State Connector is an exciting new technical solution for secure universal interoperability, an issue that has long frustrated the entire blockchain industry. It is a new core Web3 protocol that allows the state of any open system, whether that's blockchain or non-blockchain, to be proven on Flare and used with smart contracts or relayed to another chain in a trustless, decentralized manner. It's faster and safer than any existing solution, such as light client relays with simple payment verification proofs, and it achieves this while maintaining the security of a full node. The state connector has been designed to integrate with any other blockchain, no matter their Sybil resistance technique, making it possible for developers to build decentralized applications that can access the value and liquidity of multiple chains in a single deployment. And if you're wondering what this Sybil resistance means, it means the resistance to a Sybil attack, basically the consensus algorithm. For example, we have proof of stake, we have proof of work, and obviously we have federated Byzantine agreement too. So this also opens the door to a truly trustless universal bridge built on the Flare network. According to DeFi Llama, 21.8 billion of crypto assets were locked in bridges as of March 2022. And this is expected to grow dramatically as more secure interoperability technology is developed, such as the state connector. Other solutions either require trust in centralized third parties, or they force other chains to conform to their standards, in effect changing the independent chain's protocol and code so they can communicate. Flare, by contrast, does not require any trust 
other than the validators of the chain being queried. And this does not need any code change on the integrated chain. And again, this is something that is really important for adoption. You know, to go to all of these layer one solutions and ask the developers to commit code to allow them to communicate together is just not feasible. So here we have a nice little diagram here. And on the left, as you can see, is the data inputs and it's separated into two different parts. On the top here, you have the blockchain transaction data, and this can be any integrated chain, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, you know, EVM compatible or not, it doesn't really matter. This is just transaction data going into the state connector. Now, if we look further down here, we have the real world data, and this can be represented as many different things, almost an endless opportunity of things. It could be something like a bank transaction or maybe the outcome of a sporting event. This information is fed into the state connector as an input. And as we can see here on the right hand side, this data can be freely used. The smart contracts on FLIR can actually request the data from the state connector. And in return, they receive the data, which is truly decentralized. And this is called an attestation proof. And this can be used on any decentralized application, which queries the state connector. So before getting into the rest of the document, let's just quickly go over some definitions. Cross-chain interoperability. This is the communication between two or more disparate blockchain ecosystems that are technologically incompatible due to the lack of shared systems, protocols, or code. For example, Ethereum and Solana. This is also known as inter-ecosystem interoperability. Then we have multi-chain interoperability. This is the communication between two or more technologically compatible blockchains that exist within the same ecosystem and share systems, protocols, and code. For example, Polkadot parachains, Cosmos Tendermint chains, and Ethereum layer two protocols. This is also known as intra-ecosystem interoperability. We also have this thing called light client relay, which we did actually mention earlier. This is a simplified blockchain node construction built for speed that only queries the header data of any transaction and therefore lacks the security that comes from querying a full node with full history. So let me just rephrase that a little bit because it does sound a little bit technical. To put it simply, a light client relay is a very light node and it's just used to query a database, if you will, just to get the information of a particular transaction. It doesn't do any of the validation or anything like that. So let's talk about oracles and you should be familiar with this by now via the FLIR time series Oracle or the FTSO. An Oracle is an entity that connects a blockchain with external systems providing data on their state. And again, let's just talk about the FLIR time series Oracle briefly. It ingests data from multiple different sources and then it outputs this data in a decentralized manner to be used on the network. Finally, we have attestation a data proof provided by the state connector by assertion providers that confirms the validity or otherwise of any request. And you're gonna hear a little bit more about attestation providers within this document. This is a new role on the system. So I guess to understand the benefits of the state connector, it would first make sense to rewind and look back at the existing interoperability solutions. Blockchain today consists of an ever increasing number of disparate ecosystems. To date, attempts at interoperability have successfully generated multi-chain interoperability between subnets of the same layer one blockchain. However, secure decentralized cross-chain interoperability between separate layer ones has been out of reach until now. Currently, two types of interoperability solutions exist. Centralized multi-sig bridges and light client relays, and neither are satisfactory. 
cross-chain interoperability is predominantly handled by the former. These are moderate to highly centralized systems which are more susceptible to attack and offer little recourse to users in the event of failure. February's wormhole attack is just one of the many recent examples demonstrating why it is necessary to achieve decentralized interoperability in order to keep assets secure. These bridges also face regulatory risk, are censorable, and introduce a critical centralized element onto any blockchain process that often defeats the objective of building on the blockchain in the first place. And I do think that this is really important. Bridges have become the target for attackers because on the network itself, you have this protection from the consensus algorithm. And it seems like the bridge in these existing interoperability solutions can be a target and can be considered a weak spot. Recent developments in cross-chain interoperability have often implemented light client relays. Although they don't theoretically suffer from the same issue of centralization, but often do in practice, their on-chain implementation is complex, which causes them to operate quite slowly and with an inadequate approximation of the full node security making them more vulnerable to attack. They're also incompatible with certain types of networks and pre-compiled contracts, meaning they do not create true universal interoperability. Vitalik Buterin, one of the creators of Ethereum, recently proclaimed that the future will be multi-chain and not cross-chain due to the anti-network effect. This means that the more cross-chain activity there is, the greater the risk of all participants. This is likely due to his valid concerns about the robustness and security of light, clients, relays, and custodial solutions. Again, we have another nice little diagram here talking about the existing interoperability solutions that we just talked about, multi-sig bridges and light client relays. On the top here, Multisig bridges hold custody of tokens on one chain and issue wrapped versions on another chain. There are often a limited set of participants and they rely heavily on trust. So when you wrap an asset via a multisig bridge, what happens is they request you to send money to a particular address and upon receipt of that asset, they will offer you a wrapped asset on another chain. And as you can tell, you do have to rely heavily on trust. It's not ideal. Then we also have the light client relays. Simple payment verification proofs allow for the proof of a transaction on one chain to another chain. They are vulnerable to various attacks whose solutions require a large and slow code base. So that's enough of the past. Let's talk about Flare's vision. Since inception, Flare has had an uncompromising focus on achieving secure, scalable, decentralized cross-chain functionality through the development of superior technological solutions in order to help address issues slowing the progression and adoption of blockchain. Flare's ambition is to connect the decentralized economy. By providing cross-chain interoperability with the speed and security of multi-chain, Flare will mobilize value between ecosystems, unleashing the full power of Web3 and a tidal wave of liquidity. And that's what really excites me, this tidal wave of liquidity. It's going to be an absolute tsunami. All of these integrated networks being able to use a derivative of the native asset to use in one place, one ecosystem, it's going to be crazy. Developers will be empowered to build blockchain applications with real utility and bring game-changing, disruptive business models on chain. The first step is to scale the use of blockchain by enabling all digital assets to flow freely and in the process, demonstrate the future can indeed be cross-chain. This really is exciting to me, I really can't wait. 
So we're talking about cross-chain with the security of multi-chain. The Stata Connector is a native open protocol on the Flare network, providing application builders with a secure building block for cross-chain interoperability. It is a new and foundational technology that makes it possible to create secure universal interoperability between two chains, whether one, both, or neither having smart contract functionality. For example, this could be bridging non-contract tokens such as Bitcoin, Dogecoin, XRP onto Flare so that they can use Ethereum virtual machine smart contracts. It could be the bridging between any two smart contract chains with multi-chain very safely. It could also mean the use of non-contract tokens on any other smart contract chain. Finally, it could be the safe relay of information between all chains, enabling cross-chain decentralized application interoperability and composability. And for those developers in the space, I think this is really exciting. The state connector is much more secure than previous interoperability mechanisms because it is able to fully query the validity of a transaction, including its history. Other approaches like simplified payments verification proofs are unable to do this. And so the proof has no detailed history to support its validity. This means that the state connector is also able to mitigate the risk of reorganization attacks on connected chains, enabling cross-chain interoperability with the security of a multi-chain network. Wow. Moving on, the first interoperability application to be built on Flare Network will be the F Asset System, which addresses the first of the three bullets above. According to CoinGecko, only 0.7 trillion of the 2.09 trillion value of crypto tokens can currently run smart contracts. This means that two thirds of the current total value of blockchain is locked out from participating in the decentralized economy. And this was initially Flair's main audience to target some of these blockchains which do not have this compatibility with smart contracts. By minting non-contract tokens into F assets on Flair, new utility is brought to these chains. No longer are they simply an investment assets. Now they can be put to work earning yield or rewards in decentralized applications on the Flare network. There is a DeFi party on Flare and everyone is invited. And this is the perfect example of say XRP where many of the XRP investors, they're just sat there holding their XRP. And yes, you can sort of earn a return by depositing it onto an exchange, but this is again, relying heavily on the exchange. This solution is going to allow you to participate in earning the yield in a decentralized manner. So please feel free to come and join the party. The second interoperability use case between different types of chain will be solved by different applications. In fact, we have recently proposed a novel bridging system to do just this. These applications could be built on Flare or any aspiring developer using Flare's technology. And what the team are referencing here is the new novel protocol, the Layer Cake. And we're gonna do some more videos on that in the future. Information relay between chains uses the state connector to prove the required event, whether that's from another blockchain or from a database onto Flare. And then a decentralized system of relayers propagates the signed proof of this event to any other chain. The relayers are then rewarded when the state connector observes that they have put the correct data onto other chains. Importantly, decentralized applications can rely on this data because they can observe and check that it has been signed by the state connector participants. This allows decentralized applications on those chains to use information from any other chain or database that is connected to Flow, including the FTSO data. A 
first example will demonstrate the propagation of the FLIR time series oracle data to Solana. So basically Solana may get data from the FTSO, the FLIR time series oracle, to use within the applications on the Solana network. And for you developers out there, a grants program with a set of native rewards will be announced in the near future to incentivize developers to build out F assets, smart contract bridge and relay systems across as many chains as possible. If you want to get more details on that, you can definitely join their Discord. So again, here we go. The state connector powers interoperability with any chain. And here we have three different examples. The first example is the use of non-contract layer one tokens, such as Bitcoin, Dogecoin, XLM, with Ethereum virtual machine based smart contracts on FLIR as F assets. We should all be very familiar with this at the minute, bringing Bitcoin over as FBTC, the F asset, and then it unlocks this whole world of utility, being able to use in decentralized finance applications and much more. The second point here is the bridging of any smart contract chains with multi-chain safety. So Flare will be almost the middleman where these different networks that are integrated can talk with one another. The third is the use of non-contract layer one tokens on any smart contract chain. So for example, there may be an EVM compatible uh, chain which wants to use XRP. And using the state connector to observe the transactional data, this additional chain could actually do that. It will have proof of the various transactions required to bring the assets over. So we're almost at the end. One reason for limited real world utility on blockchain is the difficulty in trustlessly bringing off chain or real world event data on chain. This can mean that Web2 solutions remain more functional and newly envisaged business models haven't been feasible to implement yet. Known as the Oracle problem, blockchain applications that require external data to operate have previously needed to obtain this data from centralized sources, which creates an increased security risk. In addition to being able to trustlessly read the state of transactions on any blockchain, the state connector can also trustlessly read the state of any deterministic real world data source and prove the outcome to any contract on Flow. This avoids the risks associated with current centralized models and opens up incredible opportunities for new utility and business models. And this is something that no other network are doing. I think the state connector really is something novel and sooner or later, once these use cases emerge, people will really start to understand. Through the state connector, decentralized applications can be created that react to real world events, such as bank transactions, insurance claims, sport outcomes, house purchases, or educational attainment. A universal identity system could be created that takes attestations from external systems through the state connector. So many different use cases. So here we go, we're on the last page now. Thank you for bearing with me. Let's talk about integrating new blockchains and data sources. No amendments or integrations are required on the blockchain or data source being queried. For new chains or data sources to be integrated, all that needs to happen is the development of a new API. This is a Flur side update, so doesn't affect the queried blockchain's code base. And again, I would love to just reiterate the importance of this. You know, to have the developers of each integrated chain have to adapt their structure and code base, it really is a big ask, but we don't even really need the permission of this external system. Everything is done on the Flur side of things, which means that we can integrate as many assets or networks or data systems as 
possible really, there is no limit. Initially, it will be a governance vote to enable the new state connected data sources. The exception is that the focus will be on integrating additional blockchains and again, grants will be available for developers wishing to support Flur. In the future, it will be possible for people to deploy their own new data sources as easily as it is to deploy a contract today. And you know, this is something which I think will rapidly expand the growth of the Flare ecosystem, allowing developers to directly build onto the network themselves. And it's going to be really interesting to see this acceleration in adoption once people really do start to understand just how many novel protocols and ideas that the Flare team are bringing. So here we have the penultimate paragraph here, and this is the introduction of attestation providers who are going to be providing a new role on the Flare network. When an application on Flare requests a proof of blockchain transactions or a real world event, the state connector emits this request to a decentralized group of attestation providers, commonly known as APs. The attestation providers are a separate group to the Flare time series Oracle data providers and validators. So please just ensure that you are aware that these groups are separate. Anyone may operate as a attestation provider without any capital requirements. The security assumption is that if an independent attestation provider is correctly attesting the required state, then they will always be able to diverge from an incorrect default relayed state and end up on the correct branch of the Flare state. A detailed explanation of how this process works is available in the Layer Cake white paper. And again, there is going to be a simplified version coming soon. So just to summarize here, with the power of the state connector added to the Flare time series Oracle, Flare has created a set of native open protocols, which provide secure building blocks for next generation interoperability. Flare enables cross-chain interoperability with the security of multi-chain, faster, universal, and more secure. Flare will connect everything. And if that isn't a power move, then I don't know what is. Flare will connect everything. So on that bombshell, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. And until next time, I'm out. For mission control, we have liftoff.